हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल प्रियंका लेक्चर्स टुडे वी विल अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट्स ऑफ प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग क्रिएटिविटी क्रिटिकल थिंकिंग एंड मेटाकॉग्नेशन प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग मींस यूजिंग एग्जिस्टिंग नॉलेज और स्किल्स टू एड्रेस एन अनआंसर्ड क्वेश्चन और ट्रबलिंग सिचुएशन टू टैकल अ प्रॉब्लम वी कंबाइन टू और मोर पीसेज ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन to form a whole that solves the problem this combination of information into a single idea or product is called convergent thinking creativity creativity means new and original behavior that yields a productive and culturally appropriate result when we engage in creativity we begin with a single idea and take it into a variety of directions at least one of which results in something new original and culturally appropriate the process of generating many ideas from a single starting point is called divergent thinking this is how convergent convergent thinking thinking looks like three different piece of information combine to form a single idea this is divergent thinking look carefully at the arrows the arrows are coming towards the single idea in in convergent thinking whereas in divergent thinking the arrows are moving away from the single idea now what is the relationship between problem solving and creativity problem solving often involves creativity for example if we want to explain that ship floats on water even when metal is very dense and you want to show it to the students so how will you do it you will think about various objects that can be used as boats although you need a single solution but you will think about various options for solving the problem creativity often involves some problem solving for example you want to put a brick as a base for table lamp you need to think of various strategies for attaching the brick securely to a metal harness of the lamp shade and for running electric wire through and around the brick to an electrical socket your ability to think about various strategies will depend on your knowledge about the ways of attaching the brick with the metal you will use only one single method to attach the brick critical thinking it is the process of evaluating the accuracy and worth of information it means thinking reflectively and evaluating the evidences critical thinker usually thinks about the questions like is that really true how can we check that how can we find out if that is true now what are the characteristics of a critical thinker a critical thinker is open minded he he listens carefully and attentively the judgments of a critical thinker are based on evidence how teachers can build critical thinking in students the teachers should ask not only what happened but also how and why it happened the teachers should present controversial topics or articles that present both sides of an issue to discuss
This is the definition of critical thinking given by Norris Stephen P. Critical thinking is deciding rationally what to do or what not to believe. What to do means you decide with reasoning that what should be done and what should not be done. For example, you have an old car and you have invested some uh, money, let's say a uh, thousand rupees for getting the car into a good condition. Now, if you invest 3000 rupees more into the car, you will be able to sell it at 5000 rupees more. So, should you uh, invest more uh, 3000 rupees or you should just sell it in the condition it is right now. So, you will uh, decide about this after thinking rationally or irrationally. If you are able to take a rational decision, you are a critical thinker. Then it is, then it, uh, he says what not to believe. Again, you will base your judgments on some evidence. Then you will be able to decide if it should be believed or not. If the idea is supported by an evidence, you can believe the idea. And if it is not, then you shouldn't believe that idea. This is how a critical thinker thinks like. Metacognition. The literal meaning of metacognition is thinking about thinking. It includes learners knowledge and beliefs about their own cognitive processes. For example, it includes thinking about nature of thinking and learning, which means thinking about the process of thinking and learning, the characteristics of thinking, the characteristics of learning, various methods of thinking, the processes of learning, etc. Using effective strategies for memorizing things, knowing which learning strategies are effective and which are not, reflecting on previous learning efforts which were unsuccessful so that the learning efforts can be improvised Overt strategy. Overt strategy is the strategy of learning that can be seen in learners' behavior. For example, learners who take notes while the teacher is teaching are able to memorize things in a better way. This is possible because taking notes involves a lot of cognitive processes like paying attention, encoding information, etc. Covert strategy, on the other hand, is the learning strategy which can't be seen in learners' behavior. For example, identifying main ideas while reading something. Self-explanation means learners explain to themselves what they have learned. This is the book I have used to prepare this presentation. Thank you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos.